Okay, this is going to be a short video of my anaerobic composter. It was uh, something that I put together just to use the anaerobic composting process as opposed to the aerobic composting process. Basically, anaerobic means no air, or in this case, lack of air. Okay, so we'll just see what we have here. Alright, this is just a regular Rubbermaid trash can that has been made that has been made airtight or airtight to the best of my ability. And when I first put this together, the compost or the uh, material was uh, pretty much up to this level. It was so so high, so full of material that I could barely get the uh, lid on. It has compacted greatly in the uh, last year, year and a half time period. Get a little closer and look directly down. Oops, look directly down into this if we can. There's a lot of uh, reflected light, so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to come out. But let's take a quick look down in here. It doesn't look as though the process is completed. However, it certainly has changed form from what it was in the past. Before it was basically just leaves and grass clippings, and now it is a congealed um, brown blob of stuff. You can still see some of the uh, fibrous material in there from the, uh, from the, gla the grass clippings. The further down we go, the better material looks. I would say that it's not a bad process. And the reason why I like anaerobic uh, composting versus aerobic composting is that it's pretty much set it and forget it. You just uh, load the material in there and uh, make it airtight and uh, after a period of time I believe this has been in here for about a year or a year and a half you come out with composted material you don't have to worry about turning it you don't have to worry about uh, maintaining any certain moisture level for the most part um, as I said you just uh, load the material in there and you will have to uh, add some moisture to it at the very beginning of the process but uh, very often times the grass itself and the, uh, the grass itself will have enough moisture in there to get the process going. And that's the one thing about these anaerobic composters or this particular style that I have developed. You actually have to have it um, submerged into the ground. So you dig a pit. It doesn't have to be very deep. Um, and there's holes in the bottom of the container or the bucket. And um, that will allow any microorganisms to actually infiltrate the material from the uh, from the bottom up and um, because it's in the ground it will maintain a pretty much um, airtight seal and um, a lot of process to continue and in this particular covered process you don't smell anything for the most part because everything is contained if the uh, airtight seal is maintained um, none of the air will escape and um, it will uh, not allow any uh, odors to, to uh, come forth. Oops, there you go. Nice. And that is the, uh, the base of the unit. And those are the holes that allows the um, 
bacteria and microorganisms and earthworms and such to infiltrate upward into the uh, into the chamber in which the composting material resides. It's pretty effective. Okay, that compost is ready for screening. You can see the red wiggler right there. I did not place that in there at the beginning of the composting process. It infiltrated upward or he crawled upward into the um, composting chamber through the holes in the bottom of the bucket. <laughs> 